not exactly going as planned. <laughs> hey guys, it's Sophia from Go Soli, and today we're going to talk about how to keep your sewing patterns organized. If I'm using a sewing pattern, I think I can actually use it to alter it to make another pattern or repeat it to make a pattern I really love. I'll keep it and I want to keep it in a way that stays nice and organized. So I use these manila envelopes and in each of these manila envelopes is my pattern. So I'll show you real quick how simple that actually looks. So for this one, it's just a straight skirt. Only two pieces. One of the pieces looks like this. It's got all of my markings on it. So unlike keeping things in a digital file, I have all of my handwritten notes on here. So I know exactly how to customize the pattern when I try to make it again. So if you're used to um, trying a pattern out, you sew it for the first time and then you really like it, but there are a few things that you want to tweak. This is a really good way to keep your notes with your pattern and then make sure that you're always improving upon it every time that you try it out again. So these manila envelopes are really just, I think they're 8 by 11 and then you can fit them easily into a shoebox. So the reason why I use a shoebox is actually really important. One is that I can easily stack everything into the shoebox so I can filter through very, very easily. And then the other reason is that a shoebox has a limited amount of space. And realistically, if you look through your sewing patterns, you're going to find that there's some that you are never going to use again. And that's just part of life. Sometimes you use a sewing pattern and it was really difficult or maybe it just didn't fit right but you don't really like the look overall and those are worth letting go of but then there are other patterns such as for example the straight skirt I know I'm going to use that a thousand times I'm going to make variations of it that kind of thing. I have a boyfriend cardigan here and I can't wait to make this in a few different lengths or uh, materials or colors so I know I'm going to keep that so that's a good rule of thumb to know when to keep a pattern and when to let it go. Are you going to make it again? Are you going to improve upon it? Then definitely keep it. All right so I have my shoebox pretty well organized here. I just kind of dumped all of my manila, manila envelopes in and the easy thing about this is that now when I'm looking for a pattern, I can just filter right through. It makes it super, super easy. And then I wanted to zoom in on the fact that each of my patterns has a little diagram on it. So you'll actually be able to see a little sneak preview in your own chicken scratch, of course, of what the pattern will look like. And that's just a quick visual way for me to keep track of what everything is going to look like so I don't mix up my patterns, for instance. The other thing is that some of my patterns have a computer printed title on them. I actually would discourage against this. I tried this in the beginning because I thought I was going to be super, super organized, but I realized that life gets a hold of you and maybe you don't have the extra two minutes to go ahead and type up and print out a title. Keep it to handwriting. It's just going to keep it simpler and you're going to be much more motivated to archive your pattern if you keep it super easy. So. That's not all that's in my shoebox. I also have a couple more items. So one of the things that I always carry with me are going to be these Expo markers, permanent marker, and a highlighter. This helps me mark up my notes, but also helps me trace out new patterns. So I like to keep them close. And then the other thing that I like to keep is actually going to be this shower curtain here. What? And it sounds really unconventional, but I picked this up from this book, So Many Dresses, So Little Time, which is a pattern book. It's a really good introductory book to making a lot of different dress styles. So if you want to learn how to make a-line skirts, straight skirts, you can all find that in here. It has these pattern sheets in the back of the book, which is basically a large sheet of paper that has all the different patterns that you could use, and it layers them on top of each other. So it's really impractical to try to cut them out individually because they're, they're patterned on top of each other. So what you have to do in order to trace them out is actually use a shower liner, which is like a dollar at Walmart or something like that, and then expo marker over the lines and then trace it out over some pattern paper. So it's really useful actually and I've ended up using this a ton of times and I think it's a really good way to save space because you're not going to have all of the patterns from the book all at once. You can pick and choose what you want. Another thing that I want to call out while we're here is a set of books that I also really loved when I was first starting to sew and honestly still really love and those are these books by 
Uh, her name is Yoshiko. I think her last name is Tsukiori. Um, not the best at pronouncing that, but she's absolutely lovely. The patterns are fantastic. I would recommend trying these out once you've gotten past maybe one or three months of sewing basic beginner stuff um, because some of the directions can be a little bit simplistic but they're really lovely patterns and once again they have patterns in the back of the book that you can trace out and it's just really lovely really fun and honestly i just love the variety of looks in these books because they're not truly things that you see every day so i i love this and i really would recommend checking her out the books are extremely affordable and very um very fun very creative okay so i know this is a short video but we covered a really important step which is how to keep your sewing patterns organized and this seems to be the method that works the best for me so let me know what works for you and if you have any recommendations for ways to improve this the other thing that i really love i may have mentioned it before is that a shoe box really has a limited amount of space so I know when it's time to take a look back at my archive, filter through, and see what needs to go so that I have more room for more patterns and more creative ideas. The last thing that I wanted to mention is I talked about the, sh the shower curtain, how to trace things out, but I didn't mention the pattern paper that I use. And this is a little bit less conventional again. Uh, maybe not everybody uses this or even likes it, but for me, I every now and then I go to Ikea, I think people really love shopping there and they have this drawing paper it's designed for kids it comes off a roll so here's what it looks like it's really designed as just a basic paper roll that you can pull out and tear off and use however you like I love that I can tear off any length that I like and that it's very accessible there's no like having to sift through paper or anything like that I can just easily pull tear and go to work and it's very inexpensive I think I paid four dollars for this roll and Something like this is going to last me several months. Um, I'm, I don't design patterns every single day, of course, but it goes a really long way. So if you're looking to save a dime, invest in shower curtain liners and one of these rolls, which I will try to find a link for you down below. All right, that's it for me today. Thank you so much for watching again, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Please mention if you have any organization tips. I really love how everybody comes to their own organization uh, ritual in their own way and I always think that the simplest ways often find us by surprise so if you have any tips for me please let me know in the comments and thank you again for watching I will see you next time